Thank you all so much for coming. I am State Representative Crystal Quaid, the Minority Floor Leader. When Governor Mike Parson initially called this special legislative session, it was clear that his purpose was not to address violent crime, but to change the subject from his disastrous leadership during the COVID-19 pandemic. I wanted to invite you here today to make, this, to make this personal, because it seems Governor Parson may need a reminder that when we discuss COVID-19, we should be thinking more than just numbers, we should be looking at faces. I've invited here today to speak Angela Kinder from St. Louis, who recently lost her mother to COVID-19. And she's here today to ask the governor and other elected officials to take action that is long overdue. Thank you all for coming today, and um, I thank you to the representatives who are here to uh, help shine light on COVID families in Missouri. There you go. Thank Is you. that okay? <laughs> okay. Um, my mother lost her battle with COVID-19 on June 6th while in an ICU in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, my mother was fierce and she had survived many struggles um, in her life while maintaining a positive outlook that most people would not have been able to keep. The last thing that my mother said to me was, it's not going to win, I'm fighting. And four days later, she was dead. There are over 160,000 families in this country with stories like my mom's and mine, and over 1,300 in Missouri. And COVID families have had enough. It is not acceptable to talk about this virus like it has easily gotten over. No one knows who will be killed by it, who will have lifelong physical repercussions, and who will be mildly affected. This virus is brand new, and it makes sense that we don't know how people will be affected. We need time to study it and learn how to live with it. During that time, it is clear, common sense to protect our communities and the families in them by wearing masks. I am speaking out not only for those we have lost, but for those we still stand to lose. Missourians are dying due to terrible leadership and in this state, lack of policy entirely. The continued deaths are preventable and that is why I am here today. My mother's life mattered. She did not deserve to die alone in a hospital with only a nurse that she did not know holding her hand. It makes me sick that our governor and elected officials are not doing what they can easily do to protect us by requiring masks in all public spaces, including schools. <clears throat> I am here today to shine light on these faces that are gone. Because if you look at these faces and you don't realize that it could easily be you or your loved one, you are sadly mistaken. And if you don't recognize your obligation as an elected official to make choices to protect our communities, you don't deserve to hold your office. It has taken us a little time to get organized because we have been mourning in our homes alone, scared to leave because of what we have seen this virus do. But those of us marked by COVID are here now. This week, People like me are holding similar actions across the country to personify the hundreds of thousands of lives lost, to compel elected officials to do their jobs, and to push back on the false narrative that we need to choose between human lives and the economy. We are not going away until Governor Parson and our elected officials do their jobs and protect additional families from experiencing the pain that we have unnecessarily. And alongside Ms. Angela Kender, we have invited an educator here with us today. 
In true grassroots fashion, uh, yesterday while walking down the sidewalk, I met Mr. Julian Vivite outside the governor's mansion yesterday while he and other educators were protesting how the governor has handled the reopening of our schools. And I'd like to give him a moment to speak about what our teachers and staff are facing. The governor has had five months to develop a plan for our schools this fall, and he has done nothing. After every single school in Missouri chose to close their own doors, Parson finally said that they should. Here we are with schools about to start as early as next week, and they have absolutely no guidance from the top. We are setting up our schools to fail, and I want to give this educator a few moments just to talk about that. I'd like to thank Representative Quaid um, for allowing me to be here. My name is Julian Visite. Uh, I teach at the UA Marion and Kaufman School in Kansas City. I'm also one of the founding members of Missourians for Educational Change. I'm here today because our group is only three weeks old, but the stories we're hearing from teachers are heart-wrenching, and families as well. We have school staff reaching out to us and telling us how they face a tough choice, whether they are in rural districts that are not even requiring masks, or they're in suburban and urban schools who are switching from a hybrid plan to a virtual plan to just trying to figure out what to do. I have teachers who are telling me about how they have a choice to make. Go to school and risk their lives, or quit to protect themselves and their families and have their licenses pulled and face backlash from the education community. I have families who have to choose between going to work so they can pay bills and sending their kids to school where they will potentially get infected and bring it back home. And so now we face an issue. How many school staff have to die for this to change? How many students and family members and elders have to die to make this change? And I want to echo Representative Quaid, it didn't have to be this way. We are facing a lack of state leadership. Back in March, Governor Parson should have made the hard but necessary decision to make all schools virtual to enforce masks and social distancing to reduce the spread. If he had chosen back in March for schools to be virtual, teachers could have come up with plans. School districts could have come up with plans to make virtual successful. And his government could have funded broadband for every rural community, but in broadband for, for low-income families and made sure every student had a laptop and every educator was prepared. But he chose not to. He waited and waited. And our schools waited and waited. And now they're coming up with plans that cannot be safe. They're coming up with plans that don't support families and school staff. And now teachers are scared. Families are scared. And Mike Parson stares at them and he says, it's up to the school districts. We're not going to provide extra funding. We're not going to help you. It's up to the districts. And what he's doing is that he's taking responsibility off of himself. Instead, he wants and he's setting up schools to fail and then say it is our fault. I'm lucky. My school has chosen to go virtual for the time being and has kept me and my fellow educators safe and our families safe. But I cannot stand here while other Missouri families and educators face a very, very tough decision. So I ask, I ask Parson, make the hard but necessary decision, save lives, enforce masks, enforce virtual learning, support schools so that can happen. I ask on families. I understand you are facing a very tough decision. You have to go back to work, but why do you have to? It's because our government isn't supporting us. Work with school staff. Work with schools to figure out a way that we can support each other in our community and make sure lives are protected. And I ask of educators, it is a scary time. Our unions are not supporting us. Our government is not supporting us. The only people that can support us are us and our families. We have to start speaking now. Missourians for Educational Change will continue to fight until every Missouri family school has it safe, I hope you're willing to do the same. Thank you. Can you spell your name, please? Yes, uh, I do this all the time. Um, Visite is spelled V as in Victor, I, Z as in Zebra, I, T as in Tom, E, I. Thank you. Thank you. And last, I would like to uh, bring Representative Joe Runyons up to speak. As you all in this room know, Representative Runyons was one of the first uh, cases that we had here in this building and uh, was a strong fighter and came back uh, stronger than ever. And I just want to give him a few moments to talk about that. And I'll keep the mask on. I took it off 30 seconds back in May and 
I had an editorial against me that I wasn't doing my due duty by keeping my mask on. So uh, I got it in March. I struggled through eight days in the hospital. Part of it was in intensive care. I had a ventilator for one evening. Uh, and then it took forever. Once I got home, it was another three weeks before I was even feeling like I was being able to do anything. And then it was six weeks before I tested negative. So this, the governor said, well, you, I, you know, we're going to quarantine for two weeks and you're all right. You don't know that. And unless you can test, once you test positive, you need to be tested again to find out if, when you're negative. Until then, you are exposed, you can expose anybody. This stuff for well, two weeks doesn't really count. But I've been to events where the governor's at, up in Kansas City, different church. Everyone in the building was wearing a mask with the exception of the governor and his staff. Now that's not leadership. It's terrible leadership. And, that, and we've got St. Louis side, Kansas City side, they're stepping up and saying, we've got to wear a mask, we've got to social distance, we've got to limit this, where we go. But then we have surrounding counties that if someone's exposed and has it in, in, in say, Jackson County and doesn't know about it, and they can drive down Harrisonville and everybody gets in a big group, the, the bars are full, the restaurants are full, and now we've got to, we've spread it. The governor needs to step up and say, we're statewide ban on masks until we get this under control. And then if you have the virus, at least, to, you know, this young lady, he, she lost her mother, there is plenty of side effects after, believe me. If you're, I'm negative, I have other problems that I didn't have in the 1st of February. So. Nobody knows what's going on. You're, and the other thing, yesterday someone said, well, you had it while you were wearing a mask. Well, my doctor says, and three of them have said that, you could get it again. And that's always possible. So we need to have leadership at the state level and the federal level that says, put the mask on and keep it on until this is whipped. Thank you. Thank you all again so much for being here. Um, as you've heard today, we have folks from the educational spectrum, families with kids getting ready to go back to school, to individuals who have lost members or have contracted the virus and have gone through the terrible experience of being ill for several weeks. The end of the day, the conversation for the House Democrats is simple, is that the governor has continued to push this off and refuse to take leadership and make hard decisions and continues to lay it on everyone else. We had an amazing president one day say that the buck stops here. And I think it's high time that Parson actually listened to that. Thank you all and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Leader, wait, um, the lady who spoke, Ms. Kendra from St. Louis, whose mother passed away, she mentioned that Missourians need leadership, that we've had terrible leadership in this state. Do you, uh, do you agree with that? I definitely do. You know, I, I, I think that across this country we've seen governors take an array of stances, make decisions, sometimes change their minds. What we have not seen in Missouri are any decisions. And to me that is a failure in leadership. I just came out of a hearing downstairs where the commissioner of education said not letting kids go back to school uh, will bring a host of learning problems down the road. Uh, where others uh, said that having kids on the street instead of in school puts a lot of risk on them that being in school. The point is that it's a balance and they have chosen to let local districts uh, tip that balance in their favor. Yeah. That's not good enough? It's not good enough in that, um, yes, we, there are a lot of different views in Missouri of how this should be handled. We are Missouri, that's generally how we function. 
The difference is, is Governor Parson should have made some hard decisions five months ago so that we wouldn't be in this situation to begin with. As the educator previously said, you know, if decisions had been made, teachers would have had time to prepare. We should have directed more funding to our schools to buy cleaning supplies. I have teachers doing GoFundMes right now so they can buy Clorox wipes for their classrooms. This is, again, a, a situation that if the governor had stepped up back in March when we knew this was coming and made some hard decisions then, we would not be in the situation now where our educators are in between a rock and a hard place trying to figure out what to do. What's going to happen from this is kids will get sick, just as the governor admitted, kids will get sick. But what shouldn't happen is our school districts being blamed for that. Yeah, um, well, I, I hope that you all remember back in March, the Missouri uh, Democratic Caucus here in the House put out a list of priorities for COVID-19 way back then, um, asking for us to make those choices in the budget process, in the legislative process, and we also put out a list of things that we suggested that the governor should be doing through his uh, power, uh, through the state of emergency. Um, obviously, some of those things he did do later down the line, um, but yes, and again, I would say that we should have done this months ago. What's frustrating, I can tell you for me, with us being here today dealing with this, quote, violent crime, with a bill that does nothing to prevent violent crime, is that a year ago when we asked for this, when the Missouri Legislative Black Caucus and the House Democrats asked for a special session to deal with the violent crime then, the governor said that he needed to stay in his lane, and that wasn't his job, and the legislature would deal with it. Well, here we are with thousands of Missourians dying, and that's when he decides it's in his lane. I'm sorry, but that is unacceptable. This is election rhetoric, and it all, all it is is a distraction. I'm sorry, I only heard the second half of that. Um, you were saying Senator Shoup uh, introduced a bill in, in this special session. I actually did, have not read her bill, so I can't really speak to the um, exacts of it. I apologize. Um, I'm happy to look at it and get back to you with an answer to that. The governor's been very adamant that this is only going to be a special session on violent crime. He, as we all know, expanded it yesterday. Do you have any hopes or do you have any pleas that maybe he'll expand it a little bit more for COVID? You know, um, hopes, uh, yes, um, but expectations, not really. But that's one of the things where I have to give so much credit to Ms. Kender here. She is going around and meeting with our leaders on both sides of the aisle, dropping off these packets with faces and stories of, and we've got a couple here if you all want to look at them, of individuals right here in Missouri who we have lost and their families. And as I said, maybe if we start putting faces to this instead of numbers, the governor will, will take it seriously. Um, at this point, we're trying anything we can. Andrew, will you take any questions? Sure. I was just wondering how many you've received, how many photos, how many stories of families reaching out to you, or are you reaching out to families? How are you getting um, the photos? Yeah, um, I found some support groups on Facebook and started <clears throat> expressing what I wanted to do during special session and bringing pictures and I got a couple of interviews through that and set up an email address so people have been sending their photos of their loved one and their story to Missouri COVID Memorial at gmail.com. I have not um, sought anyone out. I've let them come to me through hearing uh, the stories that have been um, put out there, radio and, and TV. Um, I have unfortunately not been able to get a story out in St. Louis or Kansas City, which is where the majority of the, the deaths and the cases have happened. Um, <clears throat> but I have received 15 photos and stories um, at this point. I would love more because um, people's stories and sharing their faces uh, until we have protections in place for Missouri. What is that email address again? It's Missouri, spelled out, COVID memorial at gmail.com. Any other questions? Thank you all so much for being here. We appreciate it.